we learned what we called, and the book is contradicting itself. But the first form that we learned for the equation of a parabola was the standard form. And if you recall, it was in this form. Okay? You don't have to write this down. But if you want to, go ahead. And if you recall, A, the sign of A told us the direction of opening for our parabola. C was the y-intercept of our parabola. And we had negative B over 2A, which gave us the axis of symmetry for our parabola. Okay? Well, today we're going to take standard form and we're going to put it into vertex form. And the way you do that is by completing the square. But it's not as difficult as it was when we were trying to solve equations. Okay? I promise. <clears throat> this is the vertex form of a parabola. And the reason it's called vertex form is because you can actually just look at it and tell what the vertex of the equation is. Y equals A times x minus h squared plus k. Now, when you actually see this equation, you will see the letter y, you will see the letter x. But a will be a number, h will be a number, and k will be a number. Where h and k are the coordinates of the vertex of your parabola, and a tells us the direction that our parabola opens. And there are a lot of other things that we can identify using this form of the equation. But today we're simply going to concentrate on taking a parabola equation that's in standard form and putting it into vertex form by completing the square. Okay? So we're going to do some little refreshers. Well, before we refresh, in this exact thing, it is already in vertex form. I want us to concentrate on identifying which direction does it open, and what is the vertex? All right? Because once you get it in this form, tonight for your homework, that's what you're going to need to do. And it's a little tricky on the x-coordinate because of the form of the equation. Which direction does this open? <clears throat> How do we know it opens up? First, I'll A is 3. It's positive. So this parabola opens up. What are the coordinates of the vertex? No, they're not. It's negative 4 and 2. Okay, well, let's go back to this. If the equation calls for us to subtract the x-coordinate of the vertex from x, then if I subtract a negative number, it turns to x plus 4. Okay? So when you're identifying whatever's in here, whatever part of the vertex, it's always the opposite sign. And y'all need to remember that because we're going to get into circles soon. And in the uh, equation of a circle, it's the same exact thing. You still have h and k, and that's the center of your circle, and h is still minus h. Well, you put the formula? Yes. Put the formula? No, there's no formula. There's absolutely no formula. We're just identifying that the number being added or subtracted to x is the x coordinate of the vertex, and then the constant term on the end is the y coordinate of the vertex. All right? In this one, y is equal to negative one half times x minus 2 squared plus 8. Which direction does this parabola open? Down, because negative 1 half is now a, so it's opening down, and my vertex is positive 2, 8. Yes. All right. Now let's remember real quick. Okay, we've just identified. Now we're going to get into, here's the standard form. We're going to put it in vertex form. 
by completing the square. All right, if you recall, when we are completing the square, our goal is to create a perfect square trinomial that can factor to the exact same binomial multiplied by itself, right? Or couldn't I write x plus 5 times x plus 5 as x plus 5 squared? And doesn't that look a whole lot like what's in the equation? Okay, so this is my goal. It's what I'm trying to do. So let's recall real quickly. If you have x squared plus 10x and you want to complete the square and form a perfect square trinomial. This is when you divide by 2. Divide and multiply. 10 divided by 2 is like 5 squared. Squared, exactly. All right? To complete the square, remember, the coefficient of x squared has to be 1. There can't be a number in front of there. And then you take the b term, which is 10. <coughs> You divide it by 2, and you square it. Why do you divide it by 2? Because that's how we get the perfect square trinomial. It's always going to work out that way, because watch. This is x squared plus 10x plus 5 squared, which is 25. You divide by 2 because the number here needs to be the exact same number that when you multiply it by itself, you get 25. And when you add it to itself, you get 10. So that's why we divide by 2 and then square. All right? And this factors down to x plus 5 squared. Does everybody remember this? OK. Now we're changing something a little bit, because before what we said was if we have an equation, and I just put this on one side of an equal sign, I've made my equation not balanced. And so what we did was we also put it on the other side, correct? But the problem here now is that I don't just have one variable in my equation. I have two variables in my equation. And I'm trying to get my equation to say y equals. So I don't want to add something to the y term. I don't want to mess with the other side. Okay, so let's think about this. If I'm holding, I'm going to try to be visual here. One marker in each hand. Is it balanced? Okay. If I add one marker to this side, but I don't want to affect this side at all, what can I do again over here to balance myself out again? I can subtract, right? Now watch. That may not, might not make a lot of sense, but when you see it on the board, it will. Remember, we're trying to keep our equation balanced. I want to complete the square here. So that means I'm going to have to add something to that to create a perfect square trinomial. Well, what's the number I put? 2 divided by 1, um, excuse me, 2 divided by 2 squared, right? Okay, now I just added that to my equation. My equation is no longer in balance, so to rebalance it, I can't add to the y, so I'm going to do the exact opposite 